The athlete body is the most aesthetic body. And when you think of athlete, one muscle always seems to come to mind. And those are the abs. When you think athlete, you think of a lean, aesthetic six pack and not that Daniel Cormier belly. When I was growing up, Cristiano Ronaldo's physique was very famous and everybody wanted it. And Ronaldo's most famous body part was, you guessed it, his crazy six pack. While Ronaldo's physique was famous back then, we know that today the most famous physique is the Leon Edwards physique. And of course, he has a great six pack as well. So now I'm assuming I convinced you that getting an aesthetic six pack is a must have for your physique. The only problem is, is that bodybuilders have no idea how to train their abs. If you look up ab workouts online, there's terrible advice and most of the time it's stupid ab circuits. Seeing this, I knew I had to solve this problem of terrible ab workouts. Through my education and lifting experience, I've noticed that you only need four exercises to hit those abs properly and get that aesthetic six pack you've always wanted. Because I'm here to make fitness great again, I'll be giving you the only four exercises you need to get those aesthetic athlete abs. The four exercises I'll be giving you are for extra emphasis of the abs and they shouldn't be a compensation for training like a lazy bodybuilder. Bodybuilders do a lot of machines and seated exercises that take the core out of the movement. While the way your abs are being used in a proper lifting routine is statically. An example of a dynamic ab exercise is a simple sit up and an example of a static ab exercise is a plank. The reason why this shouldn't be a compensation workout for a lazy bodybuilding routine is because the best approach for hitting your abs is to do both dynamic and static exercises. This is why these dynamic ab exercises perfectly complement a great athletic bodybuilding routine which you can get in the ultimate Athletic Bodybuilding Academy. In the Ultimate Athletic Bodybuilding Academy, you'll get monthly workouts where the foundation of the exercises will be ground-based free weight exercises. These exercises use your abs as a stabilizer, so combining that with these dynamic ab exercises will allow you to hit the core in a great way. I'll leave a link in the description if you're interested. While dynamic ab exercises are essential for developing the core, the most realistic and most functional way of using your abs will be for stability. Think about it, in real life, when are you ever doing some sort of sit-up motion? Yeah, pretty much never. But pretty much every activity you do in real life uses your abs to stabilize. And while a great athletic bodybuilding routine will hit this function well, I'm thinking about dropping a core stability routine for you athletes who want to become immovable objects. Be sure to like the video if you want to see this workout. Each exercise will target one specific area of the abs, with one targeting the upper abs, one targeting the lower abs, and one targeting the oblique. You might be thinking, Martin, that's three different areas of the abs. Why are there four exercises? And that's a great question. I would have liked to have made this video with only three exercises, but this last exercise is probably the most important. And that'll be a trunk extensor exercise. While the trunk extensors aren't part of the abs, it's very important that you add them to your ab routine. This is because if you don't include them, you'll have a muscle imbalance where your trunk flexors are much stronger than your trunk extensors. And this imbalance can lead to serious injuries, so it's important to balance trunk flexion work with trunk extension work. And on to the exercises. For each portion of the abs, I'll be giving you my favorite exercises for them. But I'm a big advocate of personal preference, so if you find other exercises are more beneficial for you, go ahead and do those in your routine. For all the ab exercises I'm giving you, I'll be giving you progressions so that you're constantly improving and constantly increasing the intensity. We'll start off with the upper abs, and the upper abs are typically emphasized in exercises with trunk flexion. With my favorite exercise for the upper abs being a decline sit-up. If you can't do a decline sit-up, start with normal sit-ups. For decline sit-up progressions, the easiest variation is to have your arms to your side. Once you can do those well, you will progress to arms across your chest. Once you can do those well, you'll progress to hands behind your head. And once you can do those well, you'll progress to external load. The second exercise to balance out this trunk flexion exercise is a back extensor exercise. With my favorite being this back extension variation on a back extensor bench. The progression for this exercise will be the same as the decline sit up. The easiest being your hands at your side, then you progress to hands across your chest, then you progress to hands behind your head, and then you progress to an external load. And now on to the low ab exercise. The lower abs are typically emphasized in a leg raise exercise. When doing any sort of leg raise exercise, focus on using your abs rather than your hip flexors and not allowing your low back to round. While there are many progressions online, I found that you only really need four. The first one I would do would be a captain's chair bent knee raise. Once I can do those well, then I'll progress to a captain's chair straight leg raise. Once I can do those well, I'll progress to a hanging bent knee raise. And then once I can do those well, I'll progress to a hanging straight leg raise. And now onto the obliques, and my favorite exercise for the obliques will be a barbell rotation. There are two actions of the obliques lateral flexion and rotation. I prioritize rotation because rotation is the most functional and most practical way to use your obliques. I can't remember the last time in real life I've ever done some sort of lateral flexion movement. But when it comes to rotation, I've literally done rotation today as I was MMA training this morning. The reason why I like the barbell rotation is that I'm able to train my obliques in an explosive way. But another variation I like is just a simple cable rotation. And those are the four exercises you need to build aesthetic abs. But like I always do, I'll give you the doses for all the exercises because it doesn't matter if you know the exercises. If you're not doing the proper 
proper dosage, you won't get the most out of them. You should do about three to five sets of each ab exercise and do 10 to 20 reps with about one minute rest in between each set. But if you choose to do barbell rotations, do a little bit more rest time as that exercise is more fatiguing. In terms of progressions, you should progress once you can do 20 reps of the exercise you're currently doing. You may be thinking, this is great information, but how do I balance these ab exercises with the workout routine I'm currently doing? Because let's face it, if you do a whole entire workout routine, then do four of these ab exercises for three to five sets, you'll be at the gym for over two hours. It doesn't really matter which ab exercise you hit on a particular day. I would recommend not hitting your back extensors on a day that you're squatting or deadlifting though, because they'll already be fatigued from doing those movements. So you may have to play around with when you hit your back extensors, but if you're a smart guy or smart girl, I do have a huge female audience like I always like to say, so you'll figure it out. And that's the end of the video. Be sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments and subscribe if you want more content like this.